paper will be a bit different um, to, to what you usually see um, at these kinds of conferences, so we're not trying to estimate any, any causal effect or show some, uh, some, some interesting correlations that, that might be indicative of one, um, but rather we um, try to, to provide a methodological um, contribution uh, showing you what, what is possible um, with uh, the, the new data which are um, available electronically nowadays. So um, the main motivation for the paper is that, um, as you all know, migration data is, is highly problematic. Um, if you want to um, look at um, international migration between several countries at the same time, there are a few sources um, with which you can reliably do that. Um, you probably know most of them. The World Bank has nice data. Um, there's the, um, the OECD migration panel data, for example, that we use here. Um, and even in those data sets where, where people have um, taken a lot of, um, have made a great effort to, to standardize definitions and so on, um, you have problems with inconsistencies. Um, these data come out two or three years at best after um, uh, migration has happened. Um, and in some countries, uh, you even don't get any information because they don't provide any data which, which can be um, put into these kinds of formats. Um, at the same time, you have more and more geolocated um, data which is generated by um, smartphones, by, by um, activity on the internet. Think of, uh, for example, sending a tweet, um, which if you don't turn off the setting, um, will be georeferenced, so you know exactly the geo, um, geolocation of the person who, who just tweeted. Um, and the same is possible with, uh, or something similar is possible with um, Google, and that's something we'll, um, we'll be using. Um, and as you probably know, migrants try to try to get information. Um, so they don't only ask um, the, the friends, acquaintances, family, but um, of course the young people, especially in cities or in places which are electrified, um, they look up things on the internet. Um, and there's not that, not that much research on that yet, but I think it's very, very interesting how, uh, how people get these, um, these kinds of information. So our research question could be summarized as, um, is online search behavior in some way um, predictive of, um, of migration moves from the orange, origin countries where people search for information um, uh, to, to some destination countries? And might we be able to develop um, some kind of proxy of um, demand for emigration or demand for information about migration possibilities from this? Um, and then our concrete case, we use uh, Google uh, Trends. Um, if you don't know that yet, um, it's basically um, a tool to, to summarize uh, uh, Google search volumes across the world. So if you, if you just um, put it on, on the standard setting and enter a word, so here this is the word visa, which is somewhat problematic because it can, can be confounded with the financial service. Um, but anyway, then you, you get a map, um, for example, of search volumes in a particular year. Um, Darker colors mean that there, has, there have been more searches um, for that term. And then um, you can basically download also the, the, the time series behind that data um, down to a weekly level, for example, if you need that. Um, this would be an annual, annual snapshot here, um, which gives you some variation over time and um, some, uh, yeah, some, some information about behavior, uh, search behavior in a particular country. Um, you can also zoom in, um, but we're not going to do that today. So um, potentially, people could um, Google hundreds of thousands of things. Potentially, you could take the Merriam-Webster or another uh, uh, big book with, with potential words and, and uh, yeah, look through all the potential words which are somehow related to migration. That's, of course, a problem since um, we'll have um, annual migration data. Um, that means uh, we would have many more uh, potential regressors, many more time series for individual keywords. Um, then we would have observations, and that, of course, doesn't work. So um, we took um, to, uh, yeah, to some, some uh, website called Semantic Link um, to reduce the number of uh, potential keywords we use, um, also to be sure that we don't cherry pick um, too much what kinds of words we, um, we include in, our, in, in the search volumes we, uh, uh, we include. So what we did was um, we took um, this website, which is based on a big um, corpus of, uh, um, of, of uh, written uh, works and looks at correlations of particular um, words in these 
and um, we um, entered the word migration here, um, and then took the words um, which, are, which are correlated with this heavily. So um, I guess uh, most of you can't read that, but these are terms like uh, emigration, visas, undocumented, quotas, uh, multiculturalism. Um, this, is a, this is another example. This is immigration. You'll see in a second um, what, what you get for, for emigration. This helps us to, to go down to um, fewer keywords, and then we um, translated these into French and um, Spanish as well. Um, always included all kinds of different spellings like British American, plural, singulars, and so on, and ran these through um, the software to get the time series data from the, from the website. Um, so this is our, our keyword list. We not only um, used the word uh, migration, we also used the, um, the term economics, um, because if you know economic issues can, um, can also indicate um, either reason to, to be attracted to, to, um, to a foreign country or to leave your own country. Um, so there's a, a whole lot of, of words, and um, the approach doesn't depend on any particular of these. We then took um, the OECD International um, Migration uh, Panel data. Um, there's a yearly panel since we started that project two years ago. Um, we, um, we're still using the, the data up to 2013. Part of the reason is that we would like to have proper out-of-sample um, experiment um, next year maybe or next month where we use the new data which came out. After that, you see if our approach still works. Um, so in these data, um, if you haven't worked with them, you get um, uh, migration numbers per year from um, almost all countries in the world to 33 OECD um, countries. There are a few OECD countries which, uh, which are not well covered because they, for example, don't have good uh, migration data, but in general, um, the, the data are, are as good as it gets, I think, um, for these kinds of, of international cross-country um, regression. We then um, combine that with um, world development indicators to get some idea of um, uh, how, how widespread internet use is, literacy um, is in the, in the countries of origin. Um, then with um, a nice data set by uh, Jacques Melitz and Farid Toubal, um on um, spoken languages in different countries um, to get an idea of uh, whether, for example, English is actually spoken in the country we um, think um, our English keywords should be working in. And then, of course, um, the usual things like distance and so on, which make, um, make a difference for migration flows. Um, we then have um, two specifications we test. One is um, uh, panel fixed effects um, regression, basically, where we have um, uh, the lock inflow to the whole of the OECD by um, each foreign nationality. Um, you can do the same with um, each country of origin, doesn't really change much. Um, then you have um, a vector of uh, these um, time series for each search term we include. And then origin specific control variables, as I said, for example, population size, GDP, and so on. Um, you can add destination specific control variables like the um, like the GDP or the growth rate of the, um, of the OECD, um, indicating how attractive it is at, at any particular moment. And um, then we have um, fixed effects for the country of origin, time fixed effects um, per year, and narrow term. And our second specification is, um, is closer to what, what forecasters use. Um, so uh, this puts us basically against the benchmark of um, just expecting uh, last year's flows, last year's inflow of migrant for this year, which um, is, is quite a good forecast if you look at the R squared of that. Um, but we want to do better than that, so um, we use, um, uh, we, we try to cancel um, these kinds of things out. So um, we control for last year's inflow as well, plus um, the percentage increase in the inflow two years ago to, to this year. So for example, if migration has been growing um, by 5% per year, we would expect it to grow another five years in the baseline to make sure that that's not just picked up by our um, Google Trends variables. And then we have our trends variables and all the other um, controls as well. So um, main result, I didn't put it in a table because it's uh, not very informative to look at the individual, individual keywords. Um, but what we see is that um, depending on which specification we use, 
um, the, the R squared of these regressions within R squared increases by um, at least 100% and almost, or can, can triple, can sometimes almost quadruple. Um, but of course, if you have run these kinds of regressions, um, you start from a very, very low um, uh, variation that you can explain. So, so typically we use, um, for example, a model by, by um, Ana Maria Maida that, that she, she has published in a, in a really good paper um, as a benchmark case. And with her specification, we get an R squared of, of 0 .6, uh, 0, 0, 0 0.006. And um, that increases to, um, say, twice that um, or even up to 0 0.2 um, if we look at specific groups. Um, what kind of in, uh, specific subgroups of countries? For example, when we exclude countries which really just use um, English or Spanish um, as, the, as, the, um, as the local language um, by, uh, yeah, basically by definition. Um, if we include countries, for example, that where, where only 5% of the population can speak English, um, then our performance get be gets better, which, which uh, I think makes sense um, if people don't actually look for information in that, in that language that shouldn't be very predictive of, um, uh, yeah, of, uh, of migration. But of course, um, if you add lots of different uh, regressors to, um, to your, your regression model, um, you risk overfit. Um, so just by chance, all this variation um, of, of the keywords can, um, uh, yeah, can, can very nicely um, explain um, the changes in migration um, over time. And that, that's a massive problem. And that's a mechanical problem simply by, by using too many variables which, uh, which jump around a lot. So um, there are a couple of approaches um, from, from the machine learning literature mostly, um, how, you can, um, how you can address that. Um, and I'll go through these briefly with one slide each. So um, one is variable selection models. These have been developed, for example, in, in biostatistics when people had um, millions of different uh, genes which they wanted to link to a particular condition. Um, then it's quite clear you have one dummy vari variable as, as the outcome. Um, back in the days, you had very few people who were, uh, whose, whose genome was um, fully translated into, uh, into a matrix. And um, then you had to come up with some models. And these um, uh, variable selection models usually work by, by selectively kicking out the um, least informative um, regressors. And they can tell you whether what remains of the model is correlated with, um, uh, with your, your variable of interest. Um, these uh, models would suggest that um, keeping half of our, our keywords in the model makes sense. And interestingly, they drop out some of the standard uh, gravity, gravity variables, which don't add anything to, um, uh, to the model. Um, then out of sample ex um, estimation. Um, here the idea is that if there's a mechanical overfit coming from, uh, from adding too many regressors, which are just artificially uh, correlated with the outcome, um, then that should not be, um, should not work if we take only part of our sample to, um, to estimate the model and then use the, um, use the coefficients to uh, predict the numbers on the, um, on the rest of the data. And one nice method for this, which does it in a standardized way, way is um, k-fold cross-validation. Um, so that means um, uh, drawing um, subsamples out of, out of the data um, for example, um, dividing it up by, uh, by 10 different um, folds, as they are called, and using nine of these um, to train your model or to estimate your, uh, your regression, and then testing it on, um, on the remaining 10%, and then going systematically through all 10 possibilities, how you can do that. Um, and then you get um, kind of, yeah, a pseudo out of sample um, estimates. Um, what do these look like. Um, so two typical things you would look at are the R squared and the, and the prediction error. Um, this is um, the basic model. So this is um, the, the MIDA model um, with, um, sorry for the small script, um, in R squared in, um, in specification two ranging between, uh, between just under 0 0.4 and up to 0 0.6. Note that here the, the fixed effects are counted um, as well. Um, this is an empty model, um, so that includes hardly anything, um, just, the, just last year's um, information. 
uh, and yeah, what we would expect from that. So no other economic or social um, control variables. That just uh, that does just as well as the um, as the other uh, model. And um, this is our model. Um, so this is the MyDA model, basically with um, with our Google keywords. And since this is a histogram, um, depending on the standard you set, um, you can call that significantly better. I think it's it's significantly better um, in terms of the R square. This is um, when deleting the, um, all the other controls, just keeping the keywords. Um, so um, once you have added the, um, the keywords, um, the, the economic and so on uh, controls don't add that much. And this is something I'll come to um, on the next slide, or in two slides. And um, what about the, um, uh, the, the prediction error? Um, so if we were good at predicting um, outcomes every three or four years, um, and then having some, some, uh, some, some prediction which is very far off the, of reality, that wouldn't be good. So what you usually do is that you um, use the, the root mean squared error, um, so kind of squaring the error to make, a, make large deviations from reality um, very, very uh, painful. And what you see here is that these are, again, the, the two models in the, um, in the beginning, and here these are our models with, the, uh, with Google um, search terms, um, which have a lower um, forecasting error. So that looks quite good. Um, another way to, to reduce the dimensions to, to work against this um, problem of, of uh, overfitting is um, to use standard technique, um, uh, uh, principal component analysis, um, to uh, get some vectors from your data that are uh, to have a lower number of uh, potential control variables and add these to your model. If you just add, for example, five uh, vectors which ca capture 80% of your variation in 50 keywords, um, then automatically you, have, you, you risk less that um, there will be an artificial increase in, in your R squared, for example. And um, if we do that, um, we can look at these um, principal components um, and our fifth principal component is um, what seems to be driving that. The problem with principal component analysis is, is that it's very, very difficult to, um, uh, to interpret these. It's very abstract. Um, what we can see is that um, the first um, uh, PC and probably also the second are somehow related to increased computer use. Um, so this is, this is quite reassuring that um, it's not just increased computer use, which is explanatory of um, of, uh, of migration next year, but it is explanatory of increases in, um, in the Google search volumes. And with this me method, we, we, uh, we think we are able to uh, kind of disentangle that to some extent. But there will be some, some work needed on that. Finally, um, we try to, to put some meat to our rather abstract um, paper. And um, you perhaps know the, uh, the Gallup World Poll, this hugely expensive um, data set, um, which does uh, surveys and which, which is based on surveys in, uh, in all sorts of countries, and they have these nice questions on migration intentions. And the, uh, the, the advantage of working with someone from the OECD is that they until recently had, a, uh, had access to these data. Um, so we could actually, actually test our um, data against the, the Gallup World Poll questions, which are used a lot in the media and uh, have been used by some researchers uh, for nice papers. And the, the, um, we did kind of a horse race um, using our, um, our variables against um, this, this well-known question, which is ideally if you had the opportunity, would you like to move permanently to another country or would you prefer to continue living in this country? And if yes, uh, to which country would you like to move? Um, from that you can build a dummy variable and, um, and test that. Um, so the, the Gallup World Poll is unfortunately only available on a subsample. Of, uh, of our data, uh, not available um, for all years, not available for all countries. Um, but in these um, countries where we add our data, um, the Gallup question becomes insignificant. Um, and our, uh, our keywords perform as before. Um, so they seem to capture part of what, uh, what the Google World Poll tries to, to, uh, to measure with that question. So um, to wrap up, since I'm running out of time, um, our paper tries to show that um, using um, search, search terms um, can, 
improve um, prediction of international migration flows. And potentially from that we could um, develop some, some indicator of um, something like interest in migration or interest for information about migration. So that I think that's part of the research process to, to understand better what exactly um, we, are, we are approximating here. Um, yet we think that can help uh, policymakers in several respects. And um, one of the, okay, one of the uh, examples um, that we are thinking about um, including is, is, for example, evidence on, on post-disaster uh, post uh, situations. So for example, um, I have a few graphs and if you're interested on um, the earthquake in Nepal where you saw um, the, um, uh, where you saw search volumes in economic terms and in, in migration related terms drop down um, right after the earthquake two years ago. Um, due to lack of power and so on, and then suddenly search for, for, for a week or two um, in the aftermath. Um, and in these kinds of situations, potentially, our approach could be interesting. Thank you.